I'm telling you these things not to like scare you, but I'm just like telling you like our experiences in like foster adopting. So like everyone's experience can be totally different. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you saw the title of this video, you already know what we're going to talk about today, but we're just going to go in depth of why we have foster kids slash why we adopted and just like the background history for why we chose to do that as a family. So let's get into it. Okay, so this all began probably like right after my sister died and she died in 2003 or four. I honestly don't remember because I was like six when it happened. No, I was five still. Yeah, I was like five or six when it happened. So I don't really remember the exact year, but it happened after that. Not a prequel, but like a foreshadowing for it. And it's just that like, my sister, she was a very like caring, giving, I wanna save the world kind of person. Even like at 13 and like below, she was just that kind of person. And so she was always just like, oh, like person on the street, like here's the $30 that I have in my piggy bank, please take it. And mom's just like, um, no, you can't really do that. I'm like, you can do that, but let's not do that. Let's go buy them a meal or something. And she was, my sister was that kind of person. Me, I'm just like, I feel bad, like, if they have a dog, like, I'll go buy the dog food or something and, like, get you, like, a happy meal, but, yeah, that's about it. Like, I'm gonna keep my little monies, like, that's, that's just me. But she was that kind of person, and then after she passed, it was just, like, okay, she always, and she always wanted to have, like, more siblings because it was just her and I, and then my parents also wanted to have, like, a big family, like, my parents were, like, crazy, and they wanted, like, the big, big family, like, rooms filled with like multiple children in like one room like that kind of big family but there's just two of us so they have like my mom and sister they always just want to like have to have a big family and so my sister's like well why don't we adopt and we never really got around to it by that time so after she passed and like some years later because after like we all grieved and everything we all finally just sat down and like talked about it and for me it was more important because I wasn't always an only child like I knew what it was like to have a sibling and then I had that taken away from me for like six ish years and I was just like okay like it was time because I would have friends come over like all the time and stay the week like over for the whole weekend but then they would go home and I'm just like I don't want to have someone here for like just a week and then they leave me so like adopting a sibling for me like that would be a better option because I want to be by myself because I have like abandonment issues because of that reasoning. We all sat down and talked about it and we got into the system. We did like all that extra stuff that they have to do and everything. And if you want a video on that, like I can go in more depth with that if you want to. If not, then that's totally fine. But we did all that like paperwork and stuff that you have to do, like the house visits and like the background checks and all that fun stuff. And then we got our first kid and I think I was maybe in like ninth or tenth grade maybe I don't remember it's like one of the two and we went to go meet her they lived in like the like a town over so we went to go meet them and she was like maybe three at the time so we did that she was like little and she was just all over the place I'm just like not ready to have like a little sibling but I was like, fine, whatever. She was a big handful. She came from like, not like the worst background, but like it wasn't super great either. It was like very like low budget, like at like a two versus like at 10. So she did, she was like that. And like the whole like addicted to ramen and like McDonald's and all that stuff. So we had to like get her out of that. And it was, it was fine. She grew up like she's, we don't have her anymore, but she's fine. Um. Actually, a family friend ended up adopting her, and I think, I could be wrong, but I think my mom is her godmom. It's either that or she's just like, my my mom is her favorite person. So, it's like something like that, because she's always here, but not anymore, because they did just move, like, maybe a month ago. But her grandparents, like, lived behind us, so, like, they were just, she was, like, always here. And then her and my youngest sister were, like, a year grade-wise apart, so, like, they were always just, like, here like she was just here all the time so we see her all the time but that was our first kid and then our second people got them my 11th grade year like 
were, I remember this like vividly because it was me and Traven and we were like back to school shopping at Kmart, whatever, Kmart was still open. And my mom was like, hey, like you need to come home right now because um, they're bringing the girls over. I'm like, girl, like multiple, like what? Like I thought we just getting one kid, but no. So I go home real quick and we get three girls. There was like a two year old, a three year old, and then like a, a younger, older child. So they came and they were here for like a long time, like maybe like a year and a half, like two years maybe. So they were here and then we didn't adopt all three of them. And like saying it out loud, like it does sound kind of bad, but then like if you think about it, it it's okay. It's not okay, but like it's it's fair because the youngest was two and I was telling my mom, I'm like, okay, like if you were to adopt the like all of them, like the youngest, by the time she graduates, you'd be like in your 70s. And she's just like, yeah, I'm getting like pretty old. So we didn't adopt those two, but they went to another family and I guess they're doing good. We're not allowed to talk to them. And her sister that we have isn't allowed to talk to them. So we don't know how they're doing, but it happens. Some of that does happen. So if you get sibling groups, it is, ideal to keep them together but sometimes that doesn't work out because like something like our situation can happen or like someone of their like relatives might like take them but they're not related to the other one so they can't take them it's just like different stuff it can happen but that happened so we have the oldest one and that is jessica i think you guys might have seen her before if not then you'll see her at some point we have jessica and then after her we got, it was our first teenager. It was not a good experience because she didn't want to listen to our house rules. And our house rules are very simple and easy. Like anyone that's ever been here, they can be like, yeah, like the rights, they have like maybe like three or four rules and like, that's it. And it's just like, don't lie, don't steal, come home whenever we say, like you have a set time to come home and don't break state curfew. And like, that's it. Like. That's it, four rules. But she broke two of the four rules and like we gave her chances and stuff, but then she got mad because my mom told her that she couldn't go hang out with her boyfriend one day because she broke curfew the day before. And so she just like was like, oh no, like I'm not having this. And she called the police on my mom because she said that she like beat her up and we're just like, um, there's no kind of like markings or anything. And also she was white. So if my mom did like try to like beat her with any kind of object or hand or anything, like you would be able to see it. Cause she wasn't like tan white. She was just like pale white. So like you could, you could see it. So that happened. So we stopped for a while because we're just like, yeah, and like no teenagers are like crazy because of that. And maybe not all teenagers are like that, but that one was, it was a lot for us. So we stopped for a minute. Okay, and then after that one, we got a little boy. He was really sweet and everything. Again, we didn't adopt him, we just fostered him. And then one of our other family friends, who was also a teacher, she wanted to adopt him or like foster adopt him because she like knew him from somewhere and she just like fell in love with him and everything. So she has him and he's doing great. I see him quite often because I sub also and I just see him, I work with him and everything. And I have to constantly remind him that you can't call me by my first name at work, but he doesn't understand that because he's like, like maybe like six or something like that. So he's just like, yeah, but I only know you by this one name and I don't know what your last name is because I'm like six. So I'm like, okay, fine. Like at least call me like Miss Katrina or something. Like give me, give me some kind of like adult respect. So, but he's, he's totally fine. He's, he's cool. I like him. He's really smart too. Like apparently he called my dad from like someone else's phone and I'm just like, how do you know my dad's number? Like I barely even know my dad's number. So good for you for being six and you know his number and you can call off of someone else's phone. And then we had another girl who was, she was like 12, I think. And she didn't last very long in our house because she attacked us. And I'm telling you these things not to like scare you, but I'm just like telling you like our experiences in like foster adopting. So like everyone's experience can be totally different. Like you guys can like, foster adopt and like have like the best times ever but I'm just giving you guys our experiences in this world of foster adopting 
But we did, she didn't last very long because she did attack us and she was lying, she was stealing, she got in trouble at school and like for us, like the people in my house, we've never had like the teachers like call this call call the house because of behavioral problems. And her teacher like personally like off of his phone called my mom because she was like disrupting the class during a test and like all this stuff. And she like stole from the teacher's desk because that teacher that I actually know him because I worked for him at one point and he has a lot of snacks everywhere. So he's very like snacky, like if he's hungry, he's gonna eat. But he had like those little like packets of crackers and stuff like the peanut butter cheese crackers, like those ones, because that's like all he ever had for some reason anyway. But she just like stole them and like wasn't very good at like sneaking it and she had like evidence and stuff and she's like I didn't do it so she had to go to ISS and then he called my mom and then she didn't he didn't tell her that she called him so like get home mom's like so how was school she's like fine like I did this 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 and she's like oh so you didn't get in trouble she's like no and we're just like um if she asks you if you got in trouble that means she knows that you got in trouble so you better fess up already and like get it over with she's like I didn't get in trouble and so we're like okay like we try to help you but whatever but yeah, so she got in trouble. I had a garage sale. She wanted to buy something because I was baking. And like, she had, didn't ask for any money because she had money, but we knew that she didn't come with any kind of money like when she came here. And so she did that and then just stole money from the house and then lied about it and then got mad about it, grabbed some scissors, attacked my mom, us. She hit Stella. Stella was bleeding in the face and all that stuff. Speaking of Stella, she just walked in. Stella's. She got attacked a little bit, but she's good now. She's a lot better. Her eye was bleeding, so that happened. And so we were definitely like done for like a good minute. And they kept calling us, they were like, yeah, like you guys are like, like I hope you guys are okay and everything, but like we really need you to come and be foster parents because you guys do such a great job and everything. And we're just like, yeah, no, like we need a break because that was traumatizing. So we took a break from all that. And then that was like in maybe like March or April time frame. It's now August and we have our newest set of foster kids and they're teenagers so hopefully it'll be good but so far they're like really good they're cool and everything like they joke around and stuff but I like them everyone in the house seems to like them one doesn't care too much for the dogs so I'm just like you gotta get used to that because they're here to stay but they're good but yeah that's just like that's us and our foster history and our stories and stuff because like again I'm not trying to scare you guys but it's just like our experiences and like why we started fostering and also my mom was adopted so like that also like had like a big thing to deal with why we adopt Stella we're that, that weird family that like cares a lot for like no reason and we're just like very like close and like connected and people are just like why are you guys like that like why are you guys so happy and we're just like I don't, I don't know like we're just we like each other maybe that's why like I don't know what else to tell you but because like we're just, I don't know like I don't know how to explain we're just like like happy people like if you need help like we'll help you to the best that we can we're just like really like happy like helping people like we're not gonna go like out of our way and like go buy someone like a new car like some random person like a new car or just like go buy them like some crab legs from like Winn Dixie or something because someone was trying to like pedal for that one time so we're just happy friendly helpful people like my friend Cheyenne at one point like she needed somewhere to live because her family like was moving back to Wisconsin and she didn't have anywhere to go so we're just like you can live with us she ended up not living with us but still like it was offered to her because we're that kind of people she's my best friend so it's just like why not but okay so that's just that's pretty much it and again i'm not telling you these like stories to scare you guys out of fostering and adopting because it is it's so great that people like want to adopt and foster and stuff because there's like like a large abundance of like just kids who need somewhere to live or who neglected and need to be taken out of that situation and if you want to foster and adopt that's super great like good for you 
that's what we did we're still doing it and so like all these events that i'm telling you about that are like good or bad that happen we're still doing it because these kids do need help so if you want to go and adopt and everything just like go to your local like defax or casa or something and talk to them they'll help you out they'll be glad they'll gladly help you out because there's just that many people who need to be like taken out of a situation so yeah so i'll talk to you guys later and bye